Welcome back to the show. It's We Are Live. Chris Demon live at Midco Studio in Grand Center with the great Dr. Edmund Yako. Hit it, Gardner. Dr. Ed. Dr. Ed. The good doctor Ed. is in. That's right. You can see Dr. Ed at Hillside Animal Hospital. The website's Hillside Animal, Animal Hospital. Animal. 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 Animal Hospital. Dot net. You can call them at 314 645 2141. That's where I take my dogs. We've uh, sent all kinds of listeners, friends of the show to Hillside. Everybody's got great things to say. You'll enjoy the customer service experience and best of all, the knowledge of uh, Dr. Ed and his staff. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Hillside Hannibal Hospital. Han it would be weird if it was Hannibal. Yeah. I, but yeah. also, we I think you mistakes. missed <laughs> you, you, you missed your, uh, your calling with the alliteration potential. Like, would anybody have really noticed if you called it Hillside Hannibal Hospital? Hmm. Like, if you just say it all really quick, I think you make, you messed up on the marketing side. Yeah. You, you see know. my point? Yeah. Yeah, I figured you'd see it my way. So we, <laughs> we got Dr. Ed, and he comes in every week for Dogs on Film. You guys can play along at home. Uh, Dogs on Film, Gardner will tell you more about that in a bit. I do have a couple quick questions. How are we in the uh, allergy department? Uh, if you go by my dog, not great. <laughs> The, uh, trying to itch again? Here it comes back again. Are we dealing yeah. with a bunch of that right now? Yeah. I mean, yeah. even on the news, they're talking about how high ragweed is, you know, mm -hmm. like, like record levels. And, we, you know, we've seen it with the influx of itchy dogs coming in. Yeah. that's uh, It's got to be the most common. And then so you've it's got been about four weeks for your dog, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah so maybe just, that's Yeah, about you just right. need to get her by for a booster. <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah. Nice. Like, yeah, get her in. He's well, like, well, it's maybe. Been about four weeks. Maybe huh? if you take care of your animals, Chris. Yeah. No, no, not at all. <laughs> I mean, the shot lasts about four weeks. Sometimes we get out to eight but yeah. four, four weeks is good i mean and you know if they're really really allergic they're, they're yeah. going to be using it up faster well and especially is saint i said this the other day and i think you've talked about it is st louis markedly worse as an allergy city oh yeah i think for so people yeah. and pets right yeah with the weather changes and the humidity i mean it's just great for the mold and the pollen and mm -hmm. and everything else yeah. okay and the, so. se the different seasons i mean really you know you have different pollens and stuff during different times of the year so hmm. all right um, I did also want to let you know um, you may be dealing with more bear-related injuries to people's pets. Mm -hmm. They're closing in. Uh, a few have mm -hmm. been spotted in the general Farmington, Missouri area, which means the Baldwin sighting from a year or two ago. Now this Farmington thing, they're coming from all sides, sir. So, so why would they move from Baldwin to Farmington? I don't know. They wanted to get away from it all. <laughs> yeah. Right. So they need a little more peace and quiet. They, <laughs> they, they, they found a nice plot of land. <laughs> Suburbia wasn't for them. Yeah, they 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 either need uh, yeah. the big farm or yeah. anything down in Farmington. Dr. Andre can handle. That's right. Don't forget it, oh. Andre Overly. Murphy Settlement. Mm. Don't you forget it. Is it a good time to tell people about Farmington Fall Festival? I think so. It certainly is. Brews, blues, barbecue. Huh. Maybe we can get Dr. Ed down there. September 20th and 21st. Our pals down in Farmington. Uh, a big shout out to Discover Farmington, the tourism board down there. They've got a great. Great festival happening. Our friends John Henry, Marquise Knox, the great Funky Butt Brass Band, they'll all be playing craft beer, barbecue. The St. Louis Barbecue Society sanctions this thing, uh, Dr. Ed, so it's a big deal. It's a good time. Our friend Carly Lawrence will be uh, emceeing. She is the in-game host for the St. Louis Blues, so you guys can go hang out down there with her, with her. But we got prizes, all kinds of good stuff. I'm excited to be down there. Gardner, are you teasing me when you say you might go down there? If um, you brought your scooter down there, you'd feel like a god. I'm considering it. Okay. We'll so see. So we're doing that. What if you scoot around and I uh, borrow a horse to ride around in the downtown area? It's a good picture. Okay. It's good, good. content. Yeah, I agree. We'll look into that. Uh, again, that's I need to make sure I have enough charge in the scooter to get around Farmington. True. And I'll make sure there's enough hitch in the giddy-up. Of the horse. Right. Uh, exactly. <laughs> September 20th and 21st. Come down. It's only an hour from St. Louis. There's wineries in the area and there's hotels available. Uh, you can come down. It'll be a great time. So, Doctor, I got to ask Dr. Ed about his shirt. Now, what's this say? Uh, I'm your vet, not your therapist. Okay. <coughs> so, does this happen to you a lot where? Oh, sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You just, That's polite. You just, you just gotta be polite and uh -huh. nod your head. Do people like use their pets as a way to just yeah. oh, one get million. stuff out about right. their life? Is that it? Sure. Complain yeah. about their significant like, so other. So there's a hairball here, and I'll tell you how this hairball happened. It's because Jim wasn't paying attention to Kitty. Yeah, you should see the interplay between husband and wife. You know, when when the uh. pet is overweight, you know, who, <laughs> you know who's to blame? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one, and especially. 
If Steve wouldn't be feeding him so much twice a day. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Uh, I'm trying to think of other fun dynamics. The parent and kids is probably a good one, like where the parent's trying to take the opportunity to teach them a lesson and correct them in front of you, but then you ha- you're you forced to participate yeah. in the charade. And, it's, and you're, I, if I were you, I would want to look at them and be like, this is on you, dummy. They're a kid. Like, you knew how this was going to go. A long time ago, when I was first opened up, we had a client, and she fancied herself as a breeder of fine Persian cats. But they were anything but fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they were very sickly, and they just were oh, not no. very good quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and the woman, how do I say this gently, was not very attractive, <laughs> you know, and... right. You know, not well kept and all that. Mm-hmm. And she, she, she's in the exam room in the old building. And it's literally, I mean, there's a door separating, you know, from the waiting room full of people. And she's going on and on about her kittens and all this. And then finally she just kind of yells out, oh, Dr. Ed, you and I make such beautiful babies together. Mm. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So sorry. Well, you know, we're not going to fault you for your choices, Dr. Ed. Oh. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, Gateway Pet Guardians. We had their young professionals uh, bring out a uh, dog, Alonzo, last week to comedy. Uh, they're doing great things. Any updates on the uh, on the new facility in East St. Louis? Uh, really close. I guess it'll be a week from uh, Saturday. Is the uh, is the, the their gala soiree. the soiree? First yeah. Grade, so yeah. there's a really big push on to. Uh, well, not, obviously the building's not going to be finished, but they're trying to get it all cleaned up. Um, Jamie, the executive director, her brother, Andrew, is the, acting as the general contractor. And, oh, my gosh, is, is this guy talented? Mm. He's um, he's doing, like, the bathrooms and, you know, the wash basins and everything. It's almost like a piece of art. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, I saw it with the, the dog uh, oh, yeah. mural kind of yeah. mixed in. That's really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, last week I was there, and I was actually <coughs> helped painting the, um, not the actual picture, but the painting the, the bathroom stalls and just doing anything I can to help out to get the building ready. That's fantastic. Well, keep up the great work. You guys can support Gateway Pet Guardians online. You can adopt, you can foster, donate, all that good stuff. They do wonderful things for the area. The dog Alonzo that was here that you sir, that was on the show, that Dr. Ed fixed his leg. Just That's what, like when he was walking around the packed house at Sophie's the other day, um, he's walking around, people are petting him. I'm like, that dog was eating like dead rats um, a month ago in the streets of East St. Louis. Like that's that's how their work affects people they would literally pull right from the street and that's what's so crazy is you dogs are so great that immediately you're like oh that dog was damn near feral and then now it's just another loving pet that's you didn't a very you loving didn't tell the story about dragging the leg and all of that oh, oh come on it was it was absurd and that dog was a star too he did he did a, a tight five he got up and did some comedy did you see the photo of him with the microphone yeah it's pretty good sorry Gardner. no he's saying say? a lot Knowing Alonzo. the backstory for Alonzo, but seeing how he responds to people and all that, like immediately. I mean, he's just full of joy. No, it was amazing. Yeah, resilient. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't believe he's he's not adopted yet, or is he adopted? Not yet, but I mean, after that exposure, and yeah. I, it was really funny watching people yeah. parse through their head. Can I get this dog? <laughs> Do I need? We had people texting their significant others. <laughs> it was amazing. It's like it you got to go have that conversation. You do, after. yeah, and yeah. and like and I watch it too. And in particular, our friend Susie, who uh, runs some of the facilities uh, for the Cranesburg, she's like staring at him, and she's like <laughs> kind of biting her lip, and she's like, "Well, what do you get along with?" When people <laughs> ask like one of two questions, it's like dating or something. If like somebody's trying to act like they don't like you, but then they're like, "Well, what kind of food do you like?" You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, I see what you're doing here. It was, it's one of those things where they start asking, like, well, how is he with dogs uh, specifically over 60 pounds that are black? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's not a very general question. Like, that's what you're I like to asking if the dog is racist? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so that was very fun to see. Um, this week, what do we have on tap for Dogs on Film? Before we do that... Mm. I wanted to show Dr. Ed a video because we were talking oh, about... Oh, we, we do, yes. At the end of the first hour, he didn't hear what was going on with it, but I wanted to uh, allow his ears to hear this. Mm. So, Dr. Ed, this is a Florida man with an idea on how to slow down hurricanes in a way. So I wanted, wanted to get your thoughts on... Black sheep ran it by his wife. <laughs> <laughs> See? Uh, so sorry. here's here's Florida man trying to help out with the hurricane issues. Can't see how they haven't come up with some kind of way to com- combat these storms yet. 
And he keeps saying, oh, you know, two days ago, three days ago, oh, it's at this, but it's going to hit all this warm weather, all this warm weather and warm water. We have a Navy. Why don't the Navy come and drop ice in the warm water so it, that it can't get going as fast as it's going? There's got to be ways to combat this instead of just pointing at the thing and saying, well, it's, uh, now it's getting worse. Yeah, we know it's getting worse, but you tell us, oh, it's the warm weather. Oh, it's the wind. Well, we have an Air Force. Drive some Air Force planes around to get the winds going the opposite way. Get the Navy to go in circles to fight it the other way. <sighs> Your thoughts, Doctor? I don't know why I didn't think of that. <laughs> You're a man of science. Why, yeah. why not? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Get the military involved. What think tank does he work for? Yeah. <laughs> I want him to be Steve's a Steve's Auto Shop slash think tank. I want him to be a television meteorologist now. Yeah, I really. He is a sensible guy. <laughs> why are you not doing nothing? <laughs> God, so great. All right. What's like that the one? guy whose picnic was ruined, so now he's mad at all the women. <laughs> I would really like to see him explain to you what you should do to treat his dog that's uh, <laughs> you know biting its paw too much. That would be that would be my dream scenario because, as professional as you are, I could watch you and know what you were thinking. I just I think that I could make that happen. So just maybe the, you can see it in the eyes at mm -hmm. that point. Well, yeah. Sometimes I like I can I can imagine. Myself, I'm telling people about their pets and what I need to be done, and I can just see the words bouncing off their head <laughs> instead of, you know, sink getting in. Now, <laughs> now, and you're not even, <laughs> and you're not talking healthy discussion and people learning and wanting to learn. It's just people don't they know what they heard. Who's is Caesar Milan the most uh, offensive? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. He I can made it look like he gave rotten tomatoes. Yeah, that's right. I know. I know. I know this world. Is Caesar Milan the most offensive media that has caused you the most trouble of anything? Because I don't think it's Oprah. I mean, did Oprah make Caesar Milan? Uh, uh, not that I know. He of. feels like an Oprah <laughs> anointing. Dr. Oz, Dr. Yeah. Oz. I think he's a dangerous man. I, th you know, I think the way he the way he handles dogs is just wrong. And I mean, I honestly I think don't he know put how people he does. at risk. Yeah, I don't. What's his, what's his like? What's his thirty second elevator pitch? Do you know? No, it's, I, he's like pack mentality. Like, well, he just. I think he just approaches dogs, you know, and he doesn't. He doesn't. I don't think he like understands the signs that dogs are giving off, and it's like. You know, there are some dogs that, you know, look, you just don't approach. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, if that <laughs> yeah. dog's telling you no, you you don't go in there. You get your hand ripped off. Yeah. Like these are, yeah, at the end of the day, they're very capable beasts. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's it. Okay. Well, whatever. Shout out to Caesar Milan. I need that look again. <laughs> Sorry, it's a, it's if a, you it's had a, a reflex. I, I can tell. <laughs> if you had a discussion with him, would you just shut him down or would you shut down yourself because he wouldn't? He would just have all this kind of faux science about it. Yeah, I think I'd shut down. I mean, I'd just give a few. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. it would be sure. arguing with a uh, smile and nod. Get yeah. through it and then move on. Mm -hmm. And we move on to dogs on film. Oh, here we go. Are you ready for it? Let's do it. Do Dr. Ed, do you want to give an intro like Travis oh, does? No, it's no, time careful. for Dogs on Film. You want to try that? No. Let's just do it. <laughs> it's time. I like let's just do it. Yep. Say let's just do it. Let's just do it. <laughs> All right. Dogs on Film is the name of the game. Film is the key word in this game now. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have a ton of dog movies. Sometimes they slip in here and there without us really knowing right. until after the fact. But uh, it's a movie game. It's a movie game with two contestants today, Chris and Dr. Ed, because Travis had to leave early. But um, what we're going to do here is have six movies. We're going to pair one movie against another. So there are three sets of movies. We'll have themes throughout for each pairing. And I'll give you those themes in just a moment. But... These one-on-one -on -one matchups, you guys have to guess which one has a better score according to Rotten Tomatoes. And if you get it right, you get a point. Sometimes throughout, I'll let you know if you got it right with a... Yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. Or I might let you know you got it wrong. <laughs> so you have a maximum of three total points with the first six movies. Now, if we have a tie, if you guys have the same score, after those first six movies... Then we have a seventh movie, a tiebreaker movie in which you have to guess closest 
to the actual score. To help you out a little bit, my friend Sean records brief descriptions of these movies. We have some chit-chat along the way. And uh, so if you haven't seen the movie, you get at least a little background of the story, the plot of that movie, and also stuff about Sean's life as well is involved. So let me give you the themes for the movies today. The first one, i got to look it up here is going to be movies set in Maine. Movies set in Maine. The second one will be Best Picture Winners of the 1990s. Best Picture Winners of the 1990s. And your last pairing will be movies with car chases. Movies with a significant scene where there's a car chase. And I'll go ahead and let you know what the tiebreaker. It's not necessarily, I guess, a theme, but I threw in... A Peter Fonda movie. A Peter Fonda is your tiebreaker since he passed away recently in his 90s. I can't remember the exact age, but in hmm. his 90s. Um, so there's what we have today for Dogs on Film. You guys ready for your first one? Please. All right. Here's your first movie. The first two are set in Maine. Set in Maine. Here we go. Are we ready? How was your Labor Day weekend? Oh, it's lovely. Fairly uneventful. Saturday I went to Rosie's. Sunday I went to the Mo Bar. Monday I went to Rosie's. Friday, what'd you do? Went to Rosie's. Well, you know, I had three days off. You know what I'm going to do? I'm out of booze. Andre, 1994. Drama, family drama. One hour, 35 minutes. In a coastal Maine town, Harry Whitney, Keith Carradine, and his family of animal enthusiasts nursed an aiding seal back to health. All of the Whitneys cared deeply for Andre, the abandoned seal, but Harry's young daughter, Tony, Tina Morgi- Mor- Morino, Majorino, grows particularly close to the animal. Unfortunately, as Andre grows healthy again, his playful antics begin to infuriate the fishermen of the town, and the Whitneys become a target of ridicule. However, Tony and her family stand by their friend. You like seals? I got nothing against seals. Yes, they're playful animals. They're just fun to watch. I used to live across from the park from the zoo over there, and I'd go over there around 3.30 when you could hear them start barking for their food. And it was fun to watch them frolic. You like Seal the Singer? Seal the Singer? Yeah, he's got a couple of nice songs, doesn't he? Good looking kid. <laughs> All right. Here's your first one. Andre. Mad at that movie. Definitely made me want a, a pet seal. A seal? As a kid. Okay. Here's your second one. Set in Maine. Next up, we have Welcome to Mooseport, 2004. Farce, romance, two hours, 11 minutes. To recover a vicious, di- to, re- to recover from a vicious divorce, former U.S. President Monroe Cole, Gene Hackman, retires to his vacation home in sleepy Mooseport, Maine. When the local town council approaches him to run for mayor in the upcoming election, Cole agrees. As he campaigns against his rival, Handy Harrison, Ray Romano, the owner of a local hardware store, Cole comes to learn that well-oiled, sophisticated political machinations have no place in a small town with a friendly populace. Sounds a little preposterous to me. You ever been to Maine? Yeah, I've been to Maine. Maine's beautiful. You know what's in Maine? Rocks and pine trees. Cold water, too. Been to Banger? I think I took a a boat out of Banger, uh, or a ferry to Nova Scotia. Banger, you brought her. Uh You ever been to Nova Scotia? No. Oh, boy. You know what's in Nova Scotia? Oak Island, the money pit. No, it's not in Nova Scotia. It's off Nova Scotia, isn't it? Okay. There you go, your first two. Set in Maine, Welcome to Mooseport, or Andre, which has a better score according to Rotten Tomatoes? That's a tough one. Mooseport, uh, easy to make fun of because Ray Romano's in it, and it's no. devastating that uh, no. Gene Hackman's maybe final film ever no. uh, was that. Uh, <laughs> but then Andre tricks you because I saw it as a kid, when in reality it's probably not that great a movie, but I'm going to go with Andre simply because uh, Welcome to Mooseport, I just feel like it's too fresh and too disappointing to people. Yeah, i got to go with my first choice. i got to go with Andre. Going with Andre. All right. Chris and Dr. Ed. Yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. A 50 for Andre. A 13 for Welcome to Mooseport. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's 13. bad. I'm going to do Gene Hackman like that. Oh, man. Wow. All right. So we're tied after one. At one apiece. So we move on to Best Pictures of the 1990s. Here's your first one. Do you think uh, an ice in the ocean would help stop a hurricane? Absolutely. You got any other ideas? No, I do not. No. 
Not one. Crushed or cubed ice? Cubed. I don't like crushed ice. I don't like it. It gets in the way. Then it gets in my sensitive teeth, parts, and yuck. Next up, we have The English Patient, 1996, drama romance, two hours, 42 minutes. The sweeping expanses of the Sahara are the setting for a passionate love affair in this adaptation of Michael Andajetje's novel. Michael Andajetje's m- novel. A badly burned man, Laszlo de Almsme, Alm, Alms, Almazy, Almasay, Ralph Finnis, Refines. Ralph Fines is tended to by a nurse, Hannah, Juliet. Binoche, Binoche, an Italian monastery near the end, in an Italian monastery near the end of World War II. His past is revealed through flashbacks involving a married Englishwoman, Kristen Scott Thomas, and his work mapping the African landscape. Hannah learns to heal her own scars as she helps the dying man. So, he dies. Huh, it was a love affair, and a weird one at that. All right, there's your first one. The English Patient, best pictures of the 1990s. Here's your second. And then after that, we got Titanic, 1997, drama disaster, one hour, 15 minutes, three hours, 15 minutes. Wish it was one hour, 15 minutes. Could have done it in one hour and 15 minutes. Just sink the dang thing and get it over with. James Cameron's Titanic is an epic, action-packed romance set against the ill-fated maiden forge of the RMS Titanic, the pride and joy of the White Star Line, and at the time, the largest moving object ever built. The Titanic was the most luxurious liner of her era, the ship of dreams, which ultimately ultimately carried over 1,500 people to their death in the ice-cold waters of the North Atlantic in the early hours of April 15, 1912. A budding fictional love, a budding fictional love affair between the poor transient Jack Dawson, Leonardo DiCaprio, and elegant Rose DeWitt Bukader, Kate Winslet, is detailed throughout the film. Once more, you are. My heart will go on. Yeah. Celine Dion. Yeah, oh, that's right. You uh, could have sang the lyrics to ACDC's Back in Black, but if you just did it in that style, uh-huh. Sean would have followed along. Just with gone me. along okay. with me, yeah. yeah. Could have said anything at that point, just kind of mimicked. All right, we have Titanic versus the English Patient. Best pictures of the 1990s. Dr. Ed, you go first. I'm going to buck the obvious trend, and I'm going to go with the English Patient. The English Patient for Dr. Ed. Chris. Mm. I just got to go with it. Titanic. I think uh, people just are obsessed with that. But ah, English Patient such a critic's movie. Yeah, Titanic. Let's go with it. You're going Titanic. Dr. Ed. <laughs> 89 for Titanic. 84 for the English Patient. That's a tough one. Mm. All right. So Chris leads two to one heading into the final pairing. Car chases. Car chases is the theme for this one. Here's your first one. All right, the Blues Brothers, 1980. God, can you believe it's that old? Comedy, music, action, two hours, 28 minutes. After his release from prison, Jake, John Belushi, reunites with his brother Elwood, Dan Aykroyd, collectively known as the Blues Brothers. Jake's first task is to save the orphanage the brothers grew up in from closing by raising 5,000 bucks to pay back taxes. The two are convinced they can earn the money by getting their old band back together. However, after playing several gigs and making a few enemies, including the police, the brothers face daunting odds to deliver the money on time. I did see that one in the theater. I remember with the Guy Sheldon, Steve Stukenberg, and probably Brent Wyde. Now, Guy Sheldon was kind of like a getaway driver. Man, did we tear up the town after that movie. <laughs> Driving, you know. What'd you do? Oh, we just f***ing hauled ass everywhere we went. All right, the Blues Brothers. It's your first one, your second one. Next, we have The Bourne Supremacy, 2004, thriller, mystery, one hour, 50 minutes. Jason Bourne, Matt Damon, is living in India when he is framed by Russian agent Kirill, Carl Urban, for the theft of millions from the CIA. Kirill begins to pursue Bourne, intending to assassinate him, while Bourne and his girlfriend Marie, Frank Potente, are on the run. A shot meant for him kills her instead. Vowing revenge, Bourne sets out to prove his innocence and bring the culprits to justice, but he has to evade the CIA head, Pamela Landry, Joan Allen, who is convinced he is guilty. You think they still have traveler's checks? Yes, I know they do. How do you know? Because they have them. You know, yeah. When's I've, the last time you got traveler's checks? When was the last time I left America, for crying out loud? It, it was 1981. That was the last time I had traveler's checks. You must pry. So you really don't know, then? I'm pretty sure they do. Would you get some? If I was going out of the country, yeah, because I don't have a credit card. Do you have a debit card? No, I don't have a debit card. How do you spend money? I do it the old-fashioned way. Cash. Straight cash, homie? That's right, baby. The cash man. 
Mm. All right. Mm -mm -mm. The Born Supremacy versus the Blues Brothers. Dr. Ed, you're down two to one. You have honors. I, I'm going to go with this. Again, uh, I'm going to go with Blues Brothers. That that car chase scene. I mean, I think it set records for like how many cars they wrecked or mm -hmm. something, didn't it? Yeah. Some, <laughs> it, it's so weird how they treat comedies, but I'm going to go with uh, Born. Born. Chris, for the win. <laughs> Born Supremacy in 81. Mm. Blues Brothers in 84. I've never seen the Bourne movies. Not, none of them? No. Oh, they're they're, they're fun, right? They, oh, yeah, they are. Yeah. So we're tied at two. I can't believe you didn't have Bullet on there for car chase scenes. Well, we'll have, we can, uh, we can go back to that. We can All go right. back to we, the well for car can, chase. You know, I, as soon as you mention the categories, I think of what movies I would pick, you know. See, and it, it, this is not a complaint, but I mean, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, I just, I just, I, I expect movies. You know, like movies set in Maine. I mean, Shawshank. I mean, you think, yeah, yeah. It was considered like Shawshank. We have already done before. Okay. So oh, like, yeah. uh, we haven't done Bullet though. So we'll get, we'll go back to up. car chase. You, you know, in that in that car chase scene, the the car actually loses five hubcaps. In Bullet. Yeah, that's a little trivia. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, true. It's true. We got to play me. trivia one night still too. I know. Oh, we've yeah. got a yeah, trivia. Right. You got to let me know about that. Um. I talked to the team, and you're good to go. We just got to find when we're going to play next. They vetted, they vetted me. Yeah. They vetted you. Oh, wow. Wow. Dr. Not, Ed. I don't even want to do the yeah, tiebreaker I was going to say, like, why take that's your dogs it. there? Just show up to that's Hillside it. for the laughs. Yeah. Like, that's so great. We should do a, you should do a special comedy night at uh, Hillside, and Dr. Ed could open. No, we're talking. All right. We got to go to the tiebreaker. You're tied at two apiece. We're going with the Peter Fonda movie. I don't know if you've seen this Peter Fonda movie or not. So here you go. Is this the last one? The tiebreaker? <laughs> the tiebreaker? Yuli's Gold, 1997. Drama, one hour, 53 minutes. Widowed beekeeper and Vietnam veteran Ulysses Yuli Jackson, Peter Fonda, raises his granddaughters because his son, Jimmy, Tom Wood, is in prison. When Jimmy finds out that his estranged wife, Helen, Christine Dunford, has gotten herself into trouble with a crew of drug dealers and has run away, he asks Yuli for help. Yuli begrudgingly agrees to find Helen. When he does, he must rely on, an ex on, on the unexpected aid of divorce of a divorced nurse, Patricia Richardson, to get Helen through her withdrawal. You ever been through withdrawal? Mm, yes, yes, I have been through withdrawal. But I was supervised, so it wasn't such a bad deal. Oh. You know, I had lithium going for me and all of whatever else they were giving me. What was that for? Alcohol, I think, or was it the, maybe a little bit of both. Yeah, I went in a couple of times. It just didn't take. And that concludes this week's edition. I have to go to the bathroom, if you don't mind. I have to go to Schnucks and get some more vodka before I go to work. I don't drink till I get to work, but I like to bring my own. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs> he ends with a flurry. Um, Yuli's Gold. You have to guess closest to the actual score. Dr. Ed, we'll let you go first. I, this was a pretty good movie. Um... The first thing that popped into my head was a 79, so I'll stay with that. All right, 79. Never seen it. Uh, I'm going to go 63. 63. Dr. Ed, you're right. It's a pretty good movie. Rotten Tomatoes has it as a 94. Dr. Dang. Ed wins with the 79 gas. But a 94. That's a high score. According yeah. to Rotten Tomatoes for Yuli's Gold. Dr. Ed, the champion once again. My Goodness, I've never seen that movie, so I need to. Yep, it's really good, good. Apparently, uh, that'll do it for dogs on film today. Gardner, did we have anything we need to hit before we get out of here? I don't think so. I huh? think we're all good. Just let everybody know that Gateway Powder Coating takes great care of them. We can always do that. Gatewaypowdercoat.com online. That's the website. Doctor Ed, if you've got a smoker or a barbecue grill and you want to invite people over to watch the horrific Missouri Tigers play against West Virginia. You, the, the football team's bad enough. You don't want your grill or your outdoor furniture to look bad. If you need something painted, powder coat it instead. Take it out to Gateway Powder Coating in O'Fallon. They're partners of ours, so you all need to support them. They work very, very, very hard for their customers, so make sure you take your, uh, your goods that need powder coated to Gateway Powder Coating and check them out online, gatewaypowdercoat.com. Do you have any thoughts on Mizzou losing to Wyoming? Yeah. I, did they, did, am I a baby? I don't care about the football season anymore. I, I just wonder how long Odom's going to last. I mean, you know, there, there, was seri there was serious talk of them going 8-0 and oh up, in, up until the Georgia game. Ben Fred had to say he's an idiot on, on Twitter because he said that. 
Yeah, I mean, that's just I just it's an unfathomable. I mean, you know, uh, the offense is obviously no problem. I mean, but gosh, he's a defensive co- coach. I just I don't I just the don't understand. The only acceptable thing is that's their only loss all year and Wyoming also remains undefeated. Mm. That's the only that's way I'll accept that. Yeah. Guess what? That's not going to happen. Right. Yeah, the, you're getting into a territory now where you have at first you might not have had expectations as high as you would have when Odom takes over, but as you go on, and especially going into this year, you mentioned how some were projecting, hey, it's possible, hey, no, right? Yeah. When you start having um, letdowns, when there are expectations involved, that's when you start really stepping in it because it's it's not the same. You're, you're, it's relative to expectation is how people kind of grade you. And when you're talking about a schedule like that, even with you know them – being banned from a bowl game or an SEC yeah. championship game. Currently, we don't know how that's going to all shake out with the appeal. But when you start having expectations and then letdowns, that's when you when it starts. I hurting. didn't watch the game, but I, I read about it, uh, you know, in the paper. And I mean, apparently, Wyoming scored like 34 points in 14 minutes. Yeah, there was something to that effect. Yeah, there was a few issues the Tigers wow. had, allowing turnovers, tur- and Wyoming turning those into scores. And let's look at this I'd like real to, quick. I'd like to get. Have you ever been to Laramie? No, I'd like to, I'd like to. No, I, I hear that's a nice place. Yeah, no, I'd like to. I've been to Wyoming. I've been to Yellowstone, but I've never been to Laramie. See any bears when you're in Yellowstone? We did a lot of them. What got kind? Some, uh, grizzlies. Mm. Yeah, got some really good mm. pictures. Mm. So you've got Wyoming's next game is uh, the Saturday against Texas State, Idaho, Tulsa, UNLV. Texas San State. Diego that's State. a real school. <laughs> yeah, New I was Mexico. The exact same thing. <laughs> Nevada. Wyoming against Boise State in November, uh, Utah State, Colorado State, and then Air Force. Boise's another place I'd like to get. Have you ever been to Boise? No, nope, never been to Boise. Apparently nice as well. Mm-hmm. I like these outdoor places, but the bears keep me away. Yeah. Ah, no. The Yellowstone, I mean, you drive around Yellowstone, and all of a sudden cars are parked on the side of the road looking at something. You know they're probably looking at a bear at or something. Bears? Yeah. I think it, it would just be because uh, Yellowstone is a – that's a, basically a super volcano. I think that's pretty impressive just to be on ground that would be something like that, to know what it can do to you and mankind as a whole, yeah. if it wanted to. If you're unlucky enough to be there when it blows. Yeah, I mean, you'll go quick then. It's okay, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's an incredible place, though. Yeah. You know, I, I, have, I have incredible memories of Yellowstone, and one of them is, um, you know, the, the – the hot springs and the sulfur, mm-hmm. and you're walking around and you just smell that sulfur and it smells like rotten eggs. Mm. And you know, of course, my kids were not doing nothing but complaining about the smell. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it was just it was just imprinting on me, you know how how cool well, that it, was. It could it could it's a very sensory thing, then, right? Oh like yeah, experience because you're associating not only the visuals that you're picking up there, but also the smell. Like I'm sure if you like. If you smelled that somewhere else walking around town or whatever, right. that smell pops up, you might have a flashback even to that moment. Yeah. Like, so it's, it actually gets to your, your senses a lot. It was that trip. Um, you know, I'm into photography, and I, didn't, I was not digital at that time, and I ended up taking, like, 75 rolls of film. Wow. Oh, you my know? God. Yeah, and I, it was, like, that, that Christmas, I think, that my wife bought me a digital camera <laughs> because of, you know, the, <laughs> All the, work the, <laughs> developing, the developing costs were a little bit uh, extraordinary. But uh, I had my camera out, and I was driving one day, and I had the camera out on, like, on the console of the car, and we're coming around a bend, and all of a sudden traffic was slowed, and there's a line of cars. And as we come around the bend, there's a buffalo yeah. in, the, in the other traffic lane coming right toward it. And I literally, I let go of the wheel, grabbed my camera, and snapped. <laughs> You know, and I, you know, and, and of course it was film, so you don't know. You don't know. Right, but oh, I... Oh, that's kind of fun. Yeah, and I developed a picture, and right next to the buffalo was this traffic sign that said, go slow. Uh, and, and I want, I want a, uh, like an honorable mention in a photo contest because of that, you know. And I honestly didn't see the sign when I took the picture. I mean, I literally just snapped it and, you know, I had to keep driving. But Great name for a jam band, Go Slow Buffalo. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. That's Ed a, with that, the best story of the day. You mentioned photography. We had Robert Cohen in not too long ago. Oh, my gosh. Photojournalist with the Post-Dispatch. Yeah. To talk about the exhibit, the Pulitzer Prize photography exhibit oh. they have over at the History Museum. Have you been over there yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, like, even, like, because um, he took the one of the Ferguson protester who had, the like, the flag shirt on. Yeah. The bag of Red Hot Ripplets and thrown back the tear gas thing. That's one of the photos featured over there. 
But he had said he didn't know what he had until he right. got back and looked at that point. Yeah, there's a there's a museum in uh, part of I don't know if it's part of the Smithsonian, but it's the news museum. The, the museum. Museum. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. They have a whole floor like dedicated to the Pulitzer Prize winning um, photographs, and it's like. Um, and the story behind the right. photographs, and that's that's who brought this exhibit to town. Okay, um, it's yeah. a traveling their traveling portion of that exhibit that they brought to town. Like one of the, the best ones from the Washington Museum is, um, uh, well, I hate to say it this way, but you'll know what I mean. It's the it's that famous photograph of that uh, dying African child mm-hmm. and and the mm-hmm. vulture sitting right by it. We showed that yeah. one, uh, just because if you look at the backstory on that photo, the person who took it, I believe his name was Kevin Carter, actually. But he was in his early 30s, whoever took that photo, and it haunted him. Yep. And he ended up committing suicide. because, right. And not long after that. It, I, it was something I brought up after walking through. I went through it on the day it opened, but I came back and told the guys, like, even the joy, joyous photos in there, if you read some of the backstory, mm. it gets a little weird. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, it gets real weird with some of them, even the ones that are celebratory, and you're like, ugh, Okay. Because I, I, left, I left there in a weird mood after seeing it because I'm like, man. But you brought that up, and I didn't know if you had been over there yet. Yeah, that's, yeah you kind of stole my story, but that's okay. That's okay. exactly what I was going to say. No. Well, you, right, guys right call, there. you guys can call St. Louis Counseling <laughs> Services and get this uh, yeah. sorted out. St. Louis Counseling org online, <laughs> improving lives since 1955. Businesses, individuals, schools, all income levels, they can help out. And also download the podcast, Mental Health Matters. Guys, that'll do it for today. Chris Gardner, live. Story Stealer. <laughs> For Dr. Ed, for Travis, for Gardner, and everybody else, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. We'll be back tomorrow live at 8 a.m. See you then.